Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby here at St. Stephen Baptist Church in Louisville, Kentucky, with another powerful point to ponder as we spend meaningful moments with the Master on a daily basis. Thank you for joining me today as we continue the theme that we began yesterday, healing the wounded child within, how to recover uh, as an adult from a dysfunctional childhood, how to heal from what took place in your childhood that maybe you have suppressed, ignored, but it's still affecting you and impacting you today. And we're looking at a person by the name of Mephibosheth. We talked about him yesterday. He is the grandson of the first king of Israel, King Saul, son of Jonathan, David's close brother. And Jonathan and Saul have been killed in battle. And Mephibosheth's nurse is trying to rescue him because she's fearful that Mephibosheth may be killed also because he would be considered to be a rival to the next regime that would replace Saul, his grandfather. But something happened when he was five years old when he's being rescued by this nurse. It says in 2 Samuel chapter 4 and verse 4, Saul, Saul's son, Jonathan, had a son named Mephibosheth who was crippled as a child. He was five years old when the report came from Jezreel that Saul and Jonathan had been killed in battle. When the child's nurse heard the news, she picked him up and fled. But as she hurried away, she dropped him and he became crippled. So he is crippled because someone else has dropped him. And many of us are experiencing wounds today as adults because we got dropped by somebody. It's not our fault. Somebody dropped us. Somebody hurt us. Somebody wounded us, destroyed our childhood. And it is affecting us today. He's five years old. Now, here's the question I want you to look at. I want you to, to answer and, and explore with me. And that is, once uh, Mephibosheth, who is now disabled in his legs, he's the tiny Tim of the Bible. Now he's disabled. Where does he go? Well, let me tell you where he goes. He goes into hiding. He goes into hiding, not simply because he's experiencing shame because of his condition. He goes into hiding because he's fearful for his life. A new king has emerged, David. And he thinks the new king is like all the other kings and despots of the era. And that is that destroy all rivals and the perhaps the greatest threat to David's uh, thrones and the instability that he could receive as the king could come from Mephibosheth. So he's gone into hiding and he hides for 25 years. He's five years old when he's dropped and he hides for 25 years. And we are told where he hides. And we're told in chapter nine, verse three, it says, the king asked him, is anyone still alive from Saul's family? So I want to show God's kindness to them. Ziba replied, yes, one of Jonathan's son is still alive. He is crippled in both feet. Where is he? The king asked in Lodabar. So Mephibosheth is in Lodabar. He's been staying in Lodabar ever since he's been crippled. Now, in the Bible, names have meaning. Names have meaning. For example, uh, Jerusalem, Salon. So Salon means peace. It's the city of peace. Names have meaning. Cities have meanings. And Lodabar has a meaning. If you look up Lodabar in a strong concordance, and if, if um, remember I gave you a, a teaching earlier this year on how to study the Bible, and I hope you'll get that teaching again and look at it because there are certain tools that you need to become a competent and efficient student of the word. But if you look in your strong concordance at the word Lodabar, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a compound word. It's two things. First of all, the word lo, L-O in Hebrew means without or never. Never or without. And debar means barren or lack of fertility. So the word Lodabar means that it's a place that is barren and has no fertility and nothing grows there. And it says without or never, which means nothing ever grows there. It's barren, lacks fertility, and it always will be barren. Now, I want you to think about this, that Mephibosheth 
and was destined potentially to become the king of Israel. But, but he got dropped. And now instead of becoming the king of Israel, he is leading, living in a very barren, fertile place called Lodabar. And the reason he's in Lodabar is because he's hiding and he's in a place where he knows that nobody will come and look for him. So he's living in Lodabar. He's living in what we would call today a distressed neighborhood. And he's living in a distressed neighborhood because he got dropped. And there's a whole lot of kids who are Mephibosheths who are living in low income, low hope, no hope communities of disinvestment and great stress because they were dropped. They were dropped by the schools that did not take an interest in them. They were dropped by the government who did not invest in their communities to provide pathways upward. They have been dropped. They've been dropped by professionals who did not see their capacity, they've been dropped. And many people are now in Lodabar, destined to greatness, got greatness in your veins. I mean, after all, you got the, the, the blood of Saul in your veins, you got the blood of Jonathan in your veins, but now here you are living your life disabled and crippled in Lodabar, barren because somebody dropped you. So many kids with potential or have been dropped. And we want to blame the kids when it's not the kids' fault. It's because we have dropped them. You know, some kids are born into the world. They have opportunities because they get born into the world. But there are some kids like Mephibosheth who get damned into the world. And once he got dropped and crippled in both his legs, that sets the course and trajectory of his life. And many of us, because we got dropped when we were child children, the trajectory of our life has been, I am in Lodabar. I'm in a place of barrenness where nothing grows, where nothing develops. Potential greatness, but because I've been dropped, I'm in Lodabar. Don't forget this, that whatever goes into a child will come out in the adult. Whatever goes into the boy will come out in the man. Whatever goes into the girl will come out in the woman. It's called transactional analysis. If you want to know why you're the woman you are today, you need to look at the transactions that preceded you when you were a child, when you were a girl. If you want to know why you're the man you are today, you need to look at the transactions you experienced when you were a boy. It's called transactional analysis. But here's the good news. Regardless of what the transactions was, God wants you to have a different transaction. God's going to get you out of your load of bar. Uh, his past, Meshavishel's past, is not his destiny, as we shall see. And neither is your past your destiny. God wants to heal the child within you that has been wounded and dropped so that you can, as an adult, recover from a dysfunctional childhood. And listen to me. It's something you got to work on, and it is long overdue. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word today and what we're learning about being dropped. Thank you, Lord, that you are the God and Lord of Lodabar, that we can be in Lodabar without Lodabar being in us. Oh, God, help us to do some honest inventory this week. Heal us. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for being with me for another powerful point to ponder. Look, if you don't have a church home, come on over. Become a part of St. Stephen Church. We'd love to have you. Uh, email us, newstart at ssclive.org. Peace and blessings to you. We'll pick up on this tomorrow. You do not want to miss tomorrow. We're going to go into some very specific things about what it means to be dropped. So you join us tomorrow. But until then, don't forget, during COVID-19, Stay safe, stay sane, and never forget that God is in control. I will see you tomorrow.